The Karate Kid saga continues in a YouTube original series centered around the villain of the original movie, Johnny Lawrence of Cobra Kai. Go ahead! So first, an intro into me and the Karate Kid. First off, as a kid whose mom took him to the movies growing up, I watched them like they were the coolest thing in the world. Even today, as a full-grown man, what kind of gifts does my mom give me for Christmas? The box set, including Karate Kids 1, 2, 3, and the regrettable next Karate Kid. The series was something I really identified with. I was the one doing the, the wax on, wax off stuff to all the windows in my house, which, which by the way, is an incredibly terrible way to clean a window. Uh, because of it, I was also that little nerdy kid who's, whose mom enrolled him in martial arts. Uh, Taekwondo, where I eventually earned my black belt. Yay! And even went to a few tournaments and won a few trophies. Yay! All that to say, I've been a serious fan of the Karate Kid movies and, and hope that there would be something to, to, to bring them back since the, the last two flops that, that have been put out. That said, I was really worried that a Silicon Valley company, YouTube, owned by Google, all who have had a, a very troubling history dealing with imbuing their biases into their products, um, getting in control of my beloved childhood franchise. Uh, it made me pretty nervous. But I watched the first two episodes, and they seemed good. I was a little n worried about them roping me in, but I signed up for the, 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 free, the, the free month of Red uh, to try out the series, and I actually liked it. I'll get into more of that here in a minute, but first I want to talk about some things that, that the Cobra Kai uh, series actually did really well, namely in keeping with many of the traditional themes of the franchise. Okay, so the, the most important theme of Cobra Kai is, is this theme of bullying and how to deal with it. Uh, it's taken on what, what now exists as a very conservative view on bullying in that uh, you can't change society you can't change other people. The only thing that you can actually do is to empower yourself so that you will not be the victim. If you look at schools today, a lot of them take on this, this anti-bullying stance, a, a, a zero-tolerant stance on bullying. But what it actually translates to is, in my mind, after, after working in schools for about three years uh, and, and studying this phenomenon across the country with, with all the writing that I've done on bullying specifically... Uh, what the schools really come out with doing is passing a lot of feel-good rules that make the teachers and administration uh, feel as if they've done something by saying, we want to make this a safe space for kids. We want everyone to feel appreciated and loved, and, and we want everyone to, to feel safe. Now, that's, that's good for them. It's good for them to say that they've done something. And it's really good for them on a legal standing when something goes wrong. However, this doesn't address why kids get bullied. It doesn't address why some kids feel the need to bully others. It doesn't address the fundamental aspects of, of, of power imbalance in, in childhood psychology, in, so, in child social structures. It doesn't address the why of bullying, and so it doesn't solve the problem. What it ends up doing is actually preventing a lot of kids who need to learn how to stand up for themselves, who need to go through that process, it prevents them from being able to. Because what ends up happening is that these zero tolerance issues always come up Whenever a kid actually says enough is enough, he'll end up getting punished. Maybe the bully will too. It creates these incredibly toxic cultures where the bullies are actually incentivized by the rules that are in place. They're able to psychologically dominate everyone around them because no one, no one is, is, is equipped to put a bully in his place. Now, this is the exact opposite of Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai acknowledges these, these, these few human truths about being a kid growing up, especially growing up as a boy, though it's also true for girls, as is shown in the series. Cobra Kai actually takes, takes an opportunity to poke fun at this idea where a, a school principal says in a half-hearted fashion 
the she she wants to make a school a safe place after a parent complained. So right there off the bat, you see that schools only really care about bullying when it becomes a problem for them. They're not out to to make these schools a safer place. They're basically following a script of legality so that they can do something about it. Now, is that the type of environment that you want to be in? No, because kids are going to be bullies, and they are bullies. That's the theme throughout these first several episodes. And they poke fun at this principal for saying that she wants to create a safe space right after she starts lecturing on not having two sexy costumes. So it doesn't mean anything, and it's not protecting kids. What does protect kids is the main character going and reaching reaching out for someone to teach him karate, exactly the same as the original movie. Now, it, it shows this kid who, who, who gets bullied routinely, who sees, who sees an adult figure who knows how to take care of himself, well, I should say knows how to defend himself from a gang. And this kid reaches out to that person, caring nothing about what else is going on in his life, just to, to, to get that ability to take care of himself. Now, this, this mirrors that first story, that, that first time that, that Daniel San reached, reached out to Mr. Miyagi. Um, but it's different because this time it's, it's Johnny Lawrence who is terrible at taking care of himself in any way other than martial arts. But eventually, eventually Lawrence takes on, takes on the, the young Miguel Diaz, uh, as a student and, and through that process, this isn't a very big spoiler alert. They they show it in the promos, uh, Diaz beats up all of his bullies, uh, in, in, in a glorious act of self-defense, uh, therein really cementing the message that no adults in society will ever come to your rescue a hundred percent of the time uh so the karate kid movies make clear as does cobra kai that adults won't save you only you will save you okay now i i really wish that kids were taught this i i really wish that kids got this message so i'm i'm really thinking about putting a uh putting a poll down somewhere or just tell me if, if you'd like to see this if you'd like to see how cobra kai teaches kids how to stand up for himself like I'm, I'm really thinking about making a video about that but but all that i i really hope that more kids get this message that you need to stand up for yourself it's the only actual way to take care of bullying now when we create those really repressive cultures where bullying doesn't doesn't get solved by a kid feeling empowered to, t to stand up for themselves, then it creates the environment that gets so toxic that you have kids who who give up on life, become deeply resentful, and, and I'll, I'll say honestly, I think this is how we get school shooters, is kids who are bullied but never feel that they have the means to take care of themselves. Now, Miguel Diaz doing exactly the opposite. He's learning how to take care of himself. He's learning how to defend himself. He's learning how to be a good kid while not being a victim. And and I, I, I think that whatever you think about that, that's a kid who's never going to bring a gun to school to handle his problems. Okay, It's a kid who has created peace, not only for himself but for others, and who has, who has stomped some evil tyranny within his within his social circle, and that's not going to be a place where you're going to see a, a school shooting. Now, I, I really hope that that's the message that they keep going throughout the series, but they communicate it very well in that first, in that first chapter. So having said all of that, having said all of that, um, I just wanted to say some other things that I liked about the series and then a few things I didn't like. Um, first, first of all, something that has to be addressed every time you ever watch a Karate Kid movie or, or these Karate Kid shows, that is not how you teach martial arts. As long as just, we all know, you can't teach martial arts with the, uh, the, the wax on, wax off methods or, or it, it, Cobra Kai is actually hilarious in that they, they have the same things, but they do it completely differently. Uh, the, the, the Johnny Lawrence method of wax on, wax off is, it is hilarious to watch, but please never, don't think you're going to become a ninja or, or a, a martial arts master at karate. Like it's, it takes more than six months to get a black belt, as they're all shown having black belts by the end of it. Just no. All right. What I really want to talk about is is the casting. I I really loved the casting. I I, I, re I really enjoyed the whole casting on the whole show. Um, 
like let's just get out of the way you know first there's uh ralph macchio and, and william zabka zabka you know Sure. Uh, the ones playing Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence. Okay, they, they they were good. They were enjoyable. It was fun seeing them again. But I'm, I'm not going to sit around celebrating them too long because they've literally been playing these two roles their entire lives. I mean, since 1984, they have been Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence. They better have figured it out by now. But I do want to talk about the show's young cast. Like like a lot of the, the kids who eventually enter uh, the Cobra Kai dojo and... and and a lot of the other kids features in the show because I, I they were really enjoyable. I, I really enjoyed watching a lot of these kids. So first off, we got to talk about this this main kid, uh, Miguel Diaz. He's he's the new Daniel son of of the Cobra Kai series. He's he's that that dorky nerdy kid who you know kind of like she's all that is is actually extraordinarily handsome when you actually take even a half second to look at him, but. He, he's that dorky nerdy kid who gets bullied and and beat up for because the the other kids are just so mean and reaches out to the first person he ever sees able to defend himself and ask him to be his sensei. Now the the kid who played him, Carlo Zolo Mary Duena, Zolo Mary Duena, butchered. He he actually did a really good job, um, both in carrying the load as the TV shows. Uh, main child protagonist, uh, which included both the training for this. He had to do a lot of physical training for this. He had to do a lot of at least choreography to make the martial arts look good, as well as delivering a really good performance. Um, he was both very good at, at communicating that, that physicalness that you need to the show, uh, but during the other times, he was a very likable character. You know, you, you felt that sympathy for him. And, and whenever he was succeeding outside of martial arts, um, there, there's a little love arc. But when he was succeeding in that, it was it was very enjoyable. You, you felt really good when good things happened to the guy. And so, I mean, that it, it takes a good actor. There's a lot of actors out there who just kind of want to choke. But he did a very good job. So I'm... I'm I'm thinking, you know, this kid this kid's gonna do pretty well. I really hope to see him, I did to, to see him in the future. After that, there's Mary Mauser who plays uh, Daniel Larusso's daughter Samantha. Um, she was she was just a delight to watch. I like I don't know what it was. I was loving this character. Um, she's she's smart. She's sympathetic. Uh, she she's also got that martial arts background to where she can have an intelligent conversation with the hyper martial arts culture of this uh, of this show uh she she's she, she's a very capable person in that in that regard but what i really liked about her was that there was this this also a really good theme directed at teenagers of what happens when you're that kid who's born rich who's born beautiful who's born likable popular well you you gravitate towards towards the the popular click and and you're you you leave behind your less popular friends and and she she communicates that struggle without being a horrible person like you actually feel sympathetic for her because you know you probably would have done it too she, she was an extraordinarily likable person i i'm really hoping she's not one of those hideous evil Lindsay lowen type actresses and and that that we continue to hear all these happy stories of how everyone loves her. I'm I'm really hoping to see her for a lot of years because she's just she's just the most adorable little thing in the world, and and I loved her in this show. But she's not my favorite young character. There's there's one who just I can't even tell you why, but it's just awesome. All right, this guy Eli, Eli played by Jacob Bertrand, Eli. My goodness, um. I, I, I can't even tell you about this character because of the awesome spoilers associated with him. But but I will t I will say he was the most transformative character I've ever seen. <laughs> Besides maybe like the aliens from Alien. <laughs> no, I, he, I I gotta hand it to this kid because the plot required him to go through a lot. Um, he he played he played two different versions of himself. Uh, and both of them he played extraordinarily well. I mean, the, the first half, you felt extremely sympathetic to him. He really sold, he really sold this, this pathetic victim of circumstance 
that you know you you felt truly sorry for um and then after that after that he had this amazing transformation that was so incredibly motivating i felt motivated in like the deepest core of my toxic masculinity because of how awesome he 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 eventually became as far as as far as the writing for the plot now um I, I I can't I can't really tell you about that except that except that what it required is an actor who could fully commit to both sides of the story. You had to feel his pain in the first in the first act, and you had to like fully be embraced by his awesomeness in the second. And he had to pull that off. And this actor, he totally did. Now I'll be honest, I'm not really happy with where the plot took him. Like the the plot took him, especially in that end, the plot took him to a place that I I didn't like. I thought it really spoiled a lot of it. But as far as the acting, he did it perfectly. So I mean, wow, J Jacob Bertrand, I'm like I'm loving you right now. You're if, if you see this, I'm I'm loving you, dude. <laughs> I can't I, I can't blame you for the plot, but I can say that you fully fully did your job very good. Okay, something else worth mentioning that the the show did really well is that it, it captured a few other things um the, the the first theme that they captured very well was this theme of parenting like th this i think is important for those of us who have grown up with the series it's like the the show aged with us and and not not in a bad way not not in a bad way the original 1984 uh, karate kid is actually older than me all right, I was born in 1985, so the fact that, that this show is older than me, these characters needed to have a lot of evolution. So now they are both parents, and quite frankly, they both suck at it. Now, now one of them, one of them, Daniel LaRusso, grows up to be very wealthy and successful, um, and what you see in his kids are kids who make incredibly bad choices. Um, the the daughter, it's like she's she's a good kid, being surrounded by a bad clique, but the his son is just detestable. I saw no I saw no reason to even write his son into the plot. He was just detestable, and I mean, if if the only purpose for it was to to say that you know he's a bad parent, well, great. It, I hated that little kid, um, but on the other hand, you have uh, you have Johnny Lawrence, who is also a horrible father. So that works into the story in that both of them are trying to redeem themselves as parents and, and to do a good job actually raising their kids. And part of the way that they do that, maybe a distraction, is that they try to redeem their parenting through their students. And that's that's a huge conflict that, it, in all honesty, it gets complicated and convoluted, um, maybe kind of forces the story a little bit harder than it needed to be for a 10-episode show. Uh, it, it, it could have it could have been done better, but um, but the theme of parenting is really good in, in, in that I like I think that people from my generation who liked the original movies and wanted to keep watching it, you know, there's there's something for you there that you can sympathize with these two characters as as fathers now. So so that's something that I, I guess is is a necessary addition to the original storyline is this idea of fatherhood. And this idea of of raising not only your kids, but just raising all kids with the understanding that they're going to need to defend themselves, but also just how hard it is to be a parent in the modern age. Okay, one last thing in, uh, that, that I actually liked was that in this show, you, you saw a few themes that, that, that you really don't see coming from Silicon Valley culture. Like, I said that I was very nervous about how Silicon Valley was in control of this franchise, because Silicon Valley has a really bad habit of really, really ham-handedly forcing their views into every one of their pieces. If, if you watch Netflix, it, it seems like they go out of their way to attack, to attack conservatives, to attack Christians, to attack anything that isn't a, a very, very progressive uh, view of the world. And that, that that's really isolated them in that most people in the world don't agree with everything they say, but... If you don't, then you're going to be cast as the villain. Now, the original, the original Karate Kid actually had all the bullies were these extremely rich, uh, extremely handsome, 
<laughs> white blonde haired Aryan guys. <laughs> and I don't know, like, I don't know how much that was intentional, but, um, but back then they, they really had that theme. Now the, the, the show still sort of has this idea that rich people are evil, which like, that's, that's an overused trope that rich people are evil. I, I really wish more films and shows would try to get away from that and say, you know, maybe poor people could be evil too. Or maybe rich people could be good. It's just, it's it's getting old. Besides that, the actual bully clique, the group of bullies in, in this new, um, this this new Cobra Kai, the bullies are actually an incredibly diverse group of kids. Now, now you can see, like, like you can see the, the, the image I took of, of the Cobra Kai kids. I mean, they're a very, very diverse group, but so are the bullies. Now, I, I couldn't find a good image of them. But you have you have a group that it includes not only gorgeous, handsome people, but there's there's overweight kids, there's white kids, there's black kids, and and the the lead bully is actually an Asian guy. So the bullies are incredibly diverse. Now I thought this was this was a really smart thing to do. I really like this because by making everyone diverse, it really paints the picture that that you don't have one group are always evil one group are always the victims but just saying you know this is a this is how people act in situations and and i like that it was actually a lot more progressive than most of the stuff you'll see on netflix where if they had made this guaranteed all the bad people would have been white males that's not the case in this in this Cobra Kai here. Everyone's bad because everyone can be corrupted. And that's that's a very smart thing. They they actually did that. And because they did that, you could just focus on listening to these human stories. You could focus on the fact that 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 you had a, a the Hispanic main protagonist, that the first girl to to enter. There was actually a very funny funny scene where where uh Johnny Lawrence had to be convinced to allow a girl into Cobra Kai, and and it that that whole episode was was well done, I think. But uh, you know, everyone in this show has 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 diversity in it, and and that's good that you pit that against each other because it may, it helps you get past this conversation, that endless conversation that feels like it's starting to get a beating by now. Now they can just go on with the story, which you know Cobra Kai did a really good job on. Okay, so some things I didn't like. They really went far with the language, and and like I don't want to sound like like the the, the boring old guy, but they they really went far with the language insofar as like I don't feel like I could watch this with my kids. The the, the original movies, I actually watched those as a child with with my with my mom. She could use all these stories as as teachable moments for me to to help help me try to understand the world that I was about to grow into. And, and I'm not saying that the old ones were perfectly G-rated. They weren't. But they were something that I don't think I would feel uncomfortable watching with, with my daughter whenever she's 6 to 10. Cobra Kai, it throws out several several F-bombs, several several times where, where they curse just for no reason at all. It doesn't add to the plot. It's just it's gratuitous edginess. Okay? It's it's just gratuitous. And it's it's that sort of feeling like... You you know that you're, you know that you're really cool if you cuss un, unnecessarily, and it's 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 cool to have kids to cuss. and it's like maybe that is a good way to bait in kids to watch it, but it's not really something that, like this is a show that's based on things that happened thirty years ago, okay? That's based on a movie that happened thirty years ago. A huge portion of the people who want to watch that show are those kids who grew up. And there's some there 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 are people who who appreciated it so much when they were kids that they want it to be part of the tradition for their kids. Okay, they, there there are there are certain shows in this world that are generational that you want your kids to experience them experience them the same way that you did. Okay, Th think about think about the Wizard of Oz. That was that was produced before World War II. The Wizard of Oz is a movie that was made before World War II, yet it will never die. It is always going to become, like, it's always going to stay a part of our culture because people are going to continue to want to share that with their kids. The Karate Kid, you know, it's not the it's not the greatest produced movie in the in the history of the world, but it had these themes that like people loved and they wanted to share and they wanted to continue and and it, it's one of those movies that the lessons in it are stuff that can help you grow as a person. If you're a good parent, you want that. Now, Cobra Kai, it's like 
there's there's such good lessons, especially relevant lessons to right now. But I wouldn't feel good showing this to my kids. If I was a teacher and I tried to show it in class, I would actually risk getting fired. And it's it's like I just feel like the producers shot themselves in the foot just for, you know, 30 words throughout the show added just for edginess. Okay, like they didn't need it and didn't add anything to the plot. But it, it really ruined it for me. Like, like I was talking to my wife about it and how, you know, I, I, I would love for my daughter and whatever kids that we have later, I, I would love for her to be able to watch the Karate Kid movies with me. Like when it's getting late and about to be her bedtime, we could watch one of the movies and every night we could do that. And then after like the fifth movie in the series, she's like, okay, well, can, can we watch the next one? It was like, yeah, sure. But to finish the story, we're going to have to wait 10 years until you grow up. And it's like, uh, come on. So I, I really wish that whenever I, pe people would take the lesson from this and that if you're going to remake something that I loved as a child, that I might want to share with my children, make it to where I can watch it with my children. So in the future, I hope that people will take into consideration, let this be something I can share with my kids and maybe this thing that you've created my kids will make sure their kids watch it too. Think about that. Like, think about the long-term effects of how can your show be something culturally significant rather than quarterly profitable. All right, and this this next part this this next part has has a few spoilers. So, I mean, you've been warned. Now, what I really didn't like with this series is like I, I love the whole first ten episodes. It was only in the last half of the last episode that I really became troubled. It was like, like you, you've heard my concerns about how, how Silicon Valley would somehow get their little claws into the theme and moral of the story. Well, in that last episode, you, you, you kind of, cause like we've, we've built this, this theme on, on, you've got to learn how to defend yourself and you can't change people and you, and you can't change society. You have to learn how to empower your, your own self to deal with problems that will come your way. Okay, that was a major theme, and, and I was I was really happy that Cobra Kai did such a great job at communicating that. But in that last bit, in the last bit of the story, you saw this culture evolve within the students of Cobra Kai to where, I, I, I guess to, uh, to put it simply, they turned evil. I, I mean, all the kids, all the kids, each one of them, turned into these horrible monsters. And uh, the implication was that by doing this, that by learning how to stand up for yourself and by acting in a way that is self-empowering, that is itself making a person evil. That's the implication. It's, it's absurd. It crapped on on the work done setting up the the first 10 episodes, what happened at the end. Um, that, that whole ending was really disappointing for me. And I, I'm kind of nervous as to how they're gonna how they're gonna salvage it. Um, I, I would like to see where they go with it. If maybe there's some sort of rebalance that happens in the next series, or excuse me, in the next season. Uh, but but it felt like they started off with these amazing themes, but then tried to work in that that those 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 mentalities, that mentality of of learning how to take care of yourself, learning how to defend yourself and others, learning how how to not be a victim actually makes people evil. I, I just I wasn't digging how it ended. It, it left a sour taste in my mouth. Uh, they're gonna have to do a really good job to salvage that, uh, so they don't spoil all the greatness not only of the first nine episodes but of all the movies up to this point. It, overall, I actually did like the show. I thought the actors did a great job. I thought there was a lot of good themes that, that would have a good conversation. There's some things I would have changed. But I really want to know what you thought. If you tried out the, the, the show, if you thought that there were things that were just, it, it was absolutely terrible, let me know. If you thought it was great and that I'm being too critical, let me know that too. I want to hear from you guys. Anyway, let me know down at the bottom. And uh, that's, that's my review of Cobra Kai.